China reveals major new discovery on the moon. The cratered world of the moon is the next big target for countries from across the world, as they race to not just explore it, but also push forward into deep space. China at the moment is among the top competitors in the race, and a new discovery is acing its chances. Recently, Chinese researchers have discovered a new mineral that has not been found on Earth so far. This diamond-shaped mineral has been found in the samples returned from the moon by the Chang'e 5 lunar probe, and this discovery is truly mind-blowing for the rest of the world. So, let's talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about a major new discovery on the moon, made by China, and why it's so important for us here on Earth. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. The Moon is our nearest celestial neighbor, and the only body aside from Earth where humans have ever set foot. But there's still a great deal we don't know about it. China's Chang'e 5 mission in 2020 returned the first lunar samples since the end of the Apollo program in 1976, and scientists now report the discovery of a new mineral in the payload. Even more interesting, this tiny crystallized mineral could also be the key to generating energy through nuclear fusion. According to reports, China's National Space Administration CNSA, and China Atomic Energy Authority CAEA, jointly announced on September 9 that researchers studying samples returned from the moon by China's Chang'e 5 mission had discovered a new lunar mineral. This is China's first new mineral discovered on the moon, and the sixth ever by humankind. According to Dong Bao Tong, deputy director of the CAEA, the latest discovery places China as the third country in the world to have discovered a brand new mineral on the moon. The newly discovered mineral, named as Chang'eusite Y, is a clear, colorless, columnar crystal. A research team from the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology BRIUG, a subsidiary of CNSA, discovered this after examining lunar basalt fragments collected by the mission. The study team discovered signs of a new mineral when they received the first 50 milligrams of lunar samples in July 2021 to undertake a mineralogical investigation. However, due to the microscopic lunar soil particles, they could not obtain the necessary information to identify the mineral. Using cutting-edge techniques like X-ray diffraction, researchers from the Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology were finally able to separate one crystal particle with a radius of around 10 microns from the 140,000 lunar sample particles to decipher its crystal structure. The discovery is significant for studying lunar materials, lunar evolution, and deep space exploration, according to Li Ziying the team head of the BRIUG research team as the Chang'e 5 lunar probe landed on the moon less than two years ago in December 2020. Moreover, the Commission on New Minerals, Nomenclature and Classification of the International Mineralogical Association has formally recognized Chang'e site Y as a new mineral. This comes a few months after it was revealed that Chang'e 5 returned with lunar rocks that could fill critical gaps in solar system history. In 2021, China's Chang'e 5 spacecraft returned with 3.81 pounds of moon rock, of which two tiny pieces were dated to about 1.97 billion years old, at least a billion years younger than the moon rocks brought back home by Apollo several years ago. So, China's discoveries and achievements on the moon come against a geopolitical rivalry in space, with China competing against the US to challenge its hegemony. Analysts have gone so far as to predict that the success of China's uncrewed mission to the moon could be a precursor to more advanced missions, including manned ones and constructing lunar bases. Now, what are China's future lunar aspirations after the discovery? In 2020, the Chang'e 5 lunar probe mission, a significant achievement for China's space program, touched down on the moon. The mission's objective was to retrieve 2 kilograms of samples from the northern Mons Rumka region of the moon and return them to Earth. China is only the third country after the United States and the erstwhile Soviet Union to have achieved this feat since. Seven human Apollo spacecraft flights, six of which were successful, yielded 382 kilograms of lunar soil for the U.S. between 1969 and 1972. 
The former Soviet Union collected 301 grams of lunar soil using robotic probes between 1970 and 1976. Earlier this year, China announced that a constellation of satellites around the moon would be established as part of China's fourth phase of its lunar exploration program to provide communication and navigational services for upcoming lunar trips. So to carry out its future missions, China will lead in developing a compact lunar relay communication and navigation system. Initiation of the tiny constellation could happen in 2023 or 2024, and it also urged international partners to join its endeavor. In addition to China's multi-pronged lunar probe spread out over several missions, it strives to build a lunar base with Russia to challenge its rivals led by the United States. According to the roadmap, divided into three phases, five facilities and nine modules are planned for the station to support long and short missions to the moon's surface and orbit. The construction of the station is expected to be completed by 2035. On the other hand, the United States is all set to return with a manned mission to the moon with its Artemis 1 launch rescheduled in the near future. However, China's ongoing quest has threatened America's seasoned lunar program. In an interview with Build newspaper, NASA Chief Bill Nelson said that China could someday land on the moon and declare the satellite as its territory. So what is NASA planning to do to win this competition? Lunar samples are the coin of the realm for understanding planetary evolution, said James Head, a professor of geological sciences at Brown University. The analysis of samples that had been collected by NASA decades ago during the era of the Apollo moon landings and then the lunar robotic landers of the Soviet Union has helped scientists better understand what formed the moon. Scientists say that those findings along with the results of recent computer modeling support a theory that the moon was created out of the debris left from a collision between Earth and a Mars-sized planetary body. So, across the six Apollo missions, conducted between 1969 and 1972, NASA amassed 2,200 samples, or 382 kilograms, of lunar rocks, core samples, pebbles, sand, and dust from the lunar surface, the agency said. NASA continues to study samples from the Apollo missions and recently unsealed one of its remaining samples in preparation for the Artemis missions to the moon, the agency said in a March news release. New samples gathered from different locations on the Moon will expand the existing knowledge of the planet's volatile reservoirs and geologic evolution, NASA said in a statement. To date, most sampling has targeted the central part of the near side of the Moon, the hemisphere that faces Earth, Professor Head said. So new minerals discovered on the Moon are not abundant, said Clive Neal, a professor of planetary geology at the University of Notre Dame. The first was armal cowlite, found during the Apollo 11 mission. The term is a portmanteau referring to the mission's three astronauts. Upcoming expeditions, which include efforts by both China and the United States, are targeting unexplored territory on the Moon. Samples from other geologically interesting sites, especially from younger terrain on the planet, could help broaden scientists' understanding of how the Moon evolved, Professor Neal said. The Moon is still revealing some interesting secrets, he added. Apart from this, for several years now, NASA has publicly discussed the initial phase of its Artemis moon program. These first three missions to be conducted over the next four or five years are steps toward establishing a human presence on the moon. According to reports, the Artemis 1 mission should launch later this year, testing NASA's Space Launch Systems rocket and boosting the Orion spacecraft into lunar orbit. The second mission, Artemis II, will more or less be a repeat only with four humans on board Orion. Then comes the big test, Artemis III, which will send two humans to the moon and back during the middle of this decade. Beyond these missions, however, NASA has been vague about the timing of future Artemis missions to the moon, even as some members of Congress have pressed for more details. Now we may know why. Ars Technica has obtained internal planning documents from the space agency, showing an Artemis mission schedule and a manifest for now through the fiscal year 2034. So, although NASA can say it is sticking with the baseline plan for Artemis, this notational timeline is almost certainly unattainable. Already, the agency is looking at moving with the Artemis 3 mission beyond 2025 due to a number of factors, including a lack of moon-ready spacesuits. However, 
Looking at the bright side, once NASA launches Artemis missions, they will completely change the ways of space exploration. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.